Okay, now Kathy will bring us our first scripture reading. Our reading this morning is Psalm 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down towards your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Here ends the reading. Thank you. Our second reading comes from the book of Jeremiah in the Hebrew Bible or Old Testament in the 18th chapter, beginning at the first verse. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, come, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel as seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as the potter has done? Says the Lord, just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Here ends the scripture. From the beginning of this nation, we Americans have revered the notion of the self-made man. Benjamin Franklin, Alexander Hamilton, Abraham Lincoln, all played up their rags to riches stories. Another way of saying it is that they pulled themselves up by their own bootstraps. That is actually, though, a misuse of the original term. It's actually impossible to do that, at least while you're wearing your boots. You see, a bootstrap, you might not be able to see because this is black, but it's that little piece of cloth on the back of a boot that you can pull the boot on a little more easily with. So if you had your boots on, it's impossible to pull them up. And in reality, Relying solely on one's own independent effort is also impossible. What, who accomplishes anything without the help of others along the way? And why have we made requiring the help of others to be a shameful thing? See, that myth of the self-made person can tempt us into an even more dangerous mindset that we have made ourselves and that our lives are our own. The Bible would tell us otherwise. God fashioned the humans in the story of the Garden of Eden. And through the prophet Jeremiah, God reminded the people of Israel that just like the clay in this potter's hands, so are you in my hand. Now, this metaphor is powerful and humbling. I mean, we know the metaphor of God as the shepherd and we are the sheep. But in that scenario, at least the sheep walk or follow. I mean, clay does nothing on its own. It just sits there like, well, a lump of clay. Now, if you get your timing right, 
you can go to Bantam, Connecticut and watch Guy Wolf throw a pot. He is a ceramicist and he has a studio in Bantam. You can also see it on YouTube, watch him shaping a pot. It's very interesting. He talks about clay as a living thing. He says it likes to be pushed into shape. And you can see his powerful hands are always in motion, pushing a form out from the inside or in from the outside. And he knows when to add water, how fast to spin the wheel. And he leans in with his strong arms, exerting effort, eliminating imperfections such as air bubbles. And in the process, he comes to resemble his creations. He gets absolutely covered with clay. So no two pots are alike. And the variety of pottery is astounding. Like the diversity of God's children. There's earthenware, there's stoneware, even porcelain. And pottery can be thrown on a wheel or coiled. There's almost an infinite variety of shapes. Pieces may be salt glazed or have velvet underglazes. They may be covered with oxides and pigments or fired using different techniques and temperatures. And the results are beautiful, often useful and unique, unique creations, each reflecting the nature and the gifts of the clay itself and the pot's maker. And Guy Wolf studies antique pots for inspiration. He asks himself, what makes this old pot wonderful? The answer, he says, always comes back to the architectural integrity of the pot and the potter's reverence for the material he or she is using. The potter knew, he said, where he was going in the making of that particular pot. And so too, for the divine artist who made each of us. The potter knew what to do in the making of you and me and him and them. The potter knew the purpose for which each was created. And the divine artist selected the particular strength and shape and size and color. And then these were arranged in felicitous combinations, grouped into collections in which the whole exceeds the sum of the parts. Now, Wolf explains that traditional craftsmanship comes from the knowledge of the particular material and its attributes after years of working with it and respecting the true potential of that material. And that makes me wanna shift the analogy a little bit. In addition to being knit together by God in our mother's womb, our whole lives may be lived out on the potter's wheel. When we start out relatively formless, and are caressed into an initial shape. And over time, that is pushed and pulled and stretched and compacted. And if one side gets out of whack, it's guided gently back into proper shape. So in a life well lived in tune with our maker, we can continue to be formed into a pleasing, useful work of God's hands, surprising in our strength, beautiful in our vulnerability. Addressing God, the psalmist sang, 
of us as the work of God's hands. In Psalm 138, we hear, though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand and your right hand delivers me. So those same divine hands that were used to create us are also used as a source of protection and salvation. That which God has created, God will also protect and save in this life and the next. So may we say, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me, melt me, mold me. Fill me, use me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. And also, have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Meld me and mold me after thy will while I am waiting, yielded and still. May it be so for us. Amen. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Make me and mold me after thy will while I am waiting, yielded and still. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now. While in thy presence, humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Power, all oh power, surely is thine. Touch me and heal me, Savior divine. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Hold o'er my being, absolute sway. Fill with thy spirit, till all shall see. Christ only, always living in me. Fill with thy spirit, Till all shall see Christ only always living in me. Beautiful. 